everybody. It's Carl with Eric. Hello. And we are continuing talking about uh, this superpowers companion for Savage Worlds. Um, we did a video on that, talked about the changes. It was pretty popular. People enjoyed it. And we got some, we got a question that said, hey, can you talk about um, some of the interesting details in there? One of them was headquarters, um, which we'll talk about right now. We'll go through it. There's another one we'll we'll go through maybe next time. But headquarters are interesting. They're a little bit different than some of the older games. And I think uh, they did a really nice job there, but uh, I won't give it all away. Uh, so, so here we go. Um, they call them bases in uh, Superpowers Companion, but if I say headquarters, nobody shoot me, please. Uh, so, <laughs> that's let, what I call them. <laughs> so, so let's get started. Yeah. Um, what do you What do you want to say, just initially, before we jump into how we would create uh, one? Yeah, I mean, I think they're self explanatory in what they are, but you know, generally these are places where the heroes gather, they live, they, they use it to gather intel, uh, rest and relaxation, uh, as defense, whatever you have you. So these are rules um, for that, for your team to have it. And definitely more narrative, like we talked about in our last video, uh, than the 2E version. The 2E version had like a very just straight out points that you get based on the amount of advances you have kind of thing, uh, that you can purchase anything. Um, so yeah. So, um, so some examples. I mean, yeah, so give you know, some Hall examples of Justice, before we go through the uh, Hall of stuff. Justice, Bad Cave, uh, you know, School of the Gifted for X Men, uh, the Nautilus from Leagues of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I mean, they can run the gamut. I mean, it doesn't always have to be just like uh, you know the Hall of Justice, Teen Titan Tower kind of place. It could be, well, and and, it, uh, and as we go into it, uh, one of the roles or one of the choices uh, defines a lot of the different things. It can be a hidden base. It can be a vehicle. Or it can be a whole bunch of different stuff. It doesn't limit you yeah. to sort of your imagination there. Um, so let's go ahead and start talking about, there's four steps that go into it. You want to yep. kind of walk us through from a high level? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, so the, the the base first starts, and this is the main, I would say this is the main part of the base that gives you the, the stuff, um, is step one is the advantage that your base has, and step two is the disadvantage that you have. So they've kind of balanced it out where, um, there's six options, you roll a d6, uh, sorry, yeah, six options, you roll a d6, and you get an, an advantage out of those, and you get a disadvantage out of those. And then you have more of the kind of more narrative part, where it's, you actually talk about how it how, how it all takes place, how you how the, the supers uh, got it in the first place, and kind of just about maintenance. Um, and then the fourth step is describing upgrades. And part of the fourth step, besides the upgrade system, is also the uh, encounter system, which are all tied together. So that's the four basic steps. Right. Um, so, so pretty straightforward yeah. overall. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a couple of things we want to point out as we go through it. So first step, as you said, yeah. roll for advantage. Kind of a weird name, but it starts off with defining um, some interesting things about uh location you want let's we can just walk through them and then yeah let's walk through them and then we'll give our reaction just kind of how we feel about it and everything yep so the um, so the so the first one is an exotic location um mm -hmm. could be a jungle i guess could be a mountaintop could be space something unusual just yeah just something different. anything unusual and they give you the option here to choose either a hidden base or um something that's non-hidden and either one has advantages. So the hidden base will have, make it harder for villains to find. And the one that's kind of in a place that's, you know, not hidden, that everybody knows about, uh, you're basically able to organize, um, you know, uh, like other superheroes or government teams like other allies just much easier. Um, so yep. I feel like in this one, the hidden one really, the other one doesn't quite make sense to me because a lot of the other ones have that anyways. So the hidden one is kind of, seems more thematic seems more uh, appropriate to the theme of having exotic location, but that's maybe that's just me. Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, I could be an exotic location and be a, you know, ancient temple on top of a mountaintop that is obvious that's, to everybody, right? Yeah, it's, that makes it easy to host your, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, you know, come down to Mount <laughs> sure. Olympus and hang out with us, you know? <laughs> okay, so the, second, yeah, so, yeah. so the second one is called Hollowed. Um, yeah. Or hallowed, depending on how you want to say it. Um, and this, as the name implies, is a a respected, a revered, a important place yeah. um, that has some meaning. Um, you know, uh, 
you know, it could be a battle. It could be, you know, uh, a, they mentioned like a place, a boxing, you know, a boxing yeah. place that you grew up in a kid and you, and so that's where a boxing place, a gym. And that's where you <laughs> kind of set up. And um, so there's some type of historical or, uh, you know, community reverence for the place, right? Like that's, it's, it's hallowed either as an ancient thing or something that was like real, well respected. Um, and so, I mean, generally we forgot to say that the bases are generally for four colors, but I mean, I think it's kind of depends on your power level where you go with that. Like you say a gym would probably be like a street level or pulp, you know, where like right. an ancient academy uh, that like spans uh, planes would might probably be a cosmic or um, heavy hitters kind of, or whatever. Power level four. So I'm using the old vernacular. Power level four, or power level five. Um, so yeah, and and the and the mechanical advantage you, you get with this is that everybody starts with an extra Benny, and like basically the general public who know about it just are friendlier to you just uh, starting out. Very cool. And right. then uh, yeah, third cool. one is yeah. inspiring, um, which it, it, it's kind of like uh, I don't. <laughs> they talk about headquarters halls are inspired to great deals of or, or the, you walk through the headquarters halls, you're inspired to great deeds yeah. of self just and hero, heroism. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely feels very similar to hollowed <laughs> in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a different, there's a different mechanic, but I think it's supposed to be like, there's just something in there that inspired the team. It's not really something that the community necessarily like loves the place. Like it's some ancient place that everybody knew about. It's more like there's something there that just really inspires the superhero team. So they, they do example of like arts or like trophies from an old victories, whatever it is in the base, there's some type of inspirational thing. Um, and then every all the team members get an extra, the spirit die increases by one. Uh, so pretty strong, P pretty strong. That one's pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Especially because we know that the main skill for superheroes is focus, which is a spirit-based skill, um, unless you use that mod. So yeah, pretty strong. Very cool. Pretty cool. Um, then number four is mentor. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and, and, as we, I'll let you talk about this, but yeah. you'll see, I'll already say, you can see that these things aren't all mutually exclusive, though you're really no. rolling for one, you know, hallowed ground with a mentor. Anyway, I'll let you, I'll let you talk yeah. about a yeah, mentor. Yeah. So, okay. So mentor just means that the base has someone who's a, you know, father figure, mother figure, um, or like a really intense, like, like an alien uh, artifact that can speak to them or like an AI. Basically there's some the kind of like, you know, like the, like a um, uh, splinter to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, you know what I mean? That that's what it is. Like there's some like, like that. Uh, so it's, a, it's like in a wild card that kind of stays at the base, but, but teaches everybody. And um, uh, uh, this one gives a, basically you get, you, you have to choose somebody and they give a narration about, um, this mentor, and then everybody gets conviction. Yeah, like um, a little mini interlude kind of thing. Yeah, so. and it's I think it's a bonus conviction. I think supers are meant to have more than one conviction. So, um, yeah. And then the next one is powerful. Uh, for some reason, the base has extra power, like sci like you know equipment that's super powerful, or they're on a ley line. However you theme it, yep, um, it's super powerful. And then what what does that do, Carl? Um, well, it comes with a cost, uh, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, it says, it says here, you got to work with your GM to create a major hindrance or two minors that every yeah. in, one in the partner or party can share. Um, and they give some examples, like it could be a vow to serve this entity that's providing, you know, maybe it's along the lines of you have to protect the ley lines no matter what, you know, that, that sort of yeah. thing. And there's some um, drawback. Yeah, yeah. There's some drawback that comes with it. So it, it's, um, but the the bonus though, um, <laughs> you get extra power points, which yes. is which is nice, um, based on your power level too. Yeah, uh, either five or ten. Uh, this one has to be the most powerful by far. Like it is, it's the best one, mechanically, or at least for me, I would think. I don't know how you feel, but um, I, you know, not having played, I, I don't know if I have any. Yeah. If I have any, um, I guess it. it those hindrances could be a big deal or they might not be a big deal, I guess, depending yeah. on how you work with your game master on it. So, um, but man, more PowerPoints, um, depending on the scenario is, is definitely, 
and it's permanent. It's not like the conviction you yeah. use it or you lose it kind of thing. So it, it's pretty cool. Permanent PowerPoints. It, 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 to me, this is very akin to um, we talked about in the last video from the, from the, from two E. The um, oh, I just I just totally having a, a brain fart now. But the one that you take an extra uh, a hindrance, a major hindrance, and you get five more power points. Um, completely forgot what it was called. I brought it up last time, so I remembered before. Uh, so now watch this one, video. Remember, so watch another yeah, video. Other video. <laughs> it's different now. Now, now you can take a, a major hindrance and just get an extra edge. Um, and then remember, there's the montage mechanic in this. Now you can get more power points. Um, right. So this is this is a surprise. So yeah, if you get this one, this is basically the same thing. So that's yeah. And so finally, powerful. number six is renowned. I'll let you take that one. Um, again, this one seems very similar to Hallowed. Uh, <laughs> it's famous for something. So I guess less, I mean, we're hallowed. It's, um, you know, it, it's a respect thing. This is just like, it's famous. The base itself was famous for something either that it had like, it used to be the greatest scientific lab, like maybe not respected, but just famous for something. Well, I um, mean, if you're- It had if, the biggest if, library or- I mean, yeah. if you're a Packers fan, it could be Lambeau Field, but then that could also be hallowed. You know sure. I mean? It could be it, anything. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, um, and, and basically the, the, the bonus for this one is that every team member gets a permanent die type in a trade of their choice increase. So this one's much more flexible while the spirit was, you get a spirit one. This one is, you can put it to any of your attributes or any skill. Um, so pretty, pretty, pretty intense. Um, uh, oh, the, again, yeah, let's, let's, let's run through complications before we go back over. Yeah. It, Cause think, with right? great power comes great responsibility great so, so, the, <laughs> so, the, so the complications are those drawbacks that eric was talking about and that's the same yeah. thing you're rolling a d6 um to see what comes the yin and the yang here so the first one is yeah. contested which means there's powerful rivals that are also interested in a base maybe it's um you know maybe it's two you know you work for one friendly government and there's another government that also has their superheroes and you all feel that this base belongs to you. Um, it it doesn't have to necessarily be another supers team. It could just be um, you know something else as long as it's yeah. powerful and can and can you know try to take yeah. over the space or push you out. Um, yeah they even give the example of a um, a jealous building inspector <laughs> with a petty grudge. So it, you could definitely theme it a lot of ways for sure. <laughs> Somebody who has influence over this place that you're in that could potentially get in the way of that. Yeah. Or, or what, what, what does it mean mechanically? What, what, is that, what happens? You get an enemy minor hindrance. Um, so yeah, you, basically the GM creates an hindrance. NPC. It's not a major yeah. hindrance. So it's not like they're actively searching out, right? So it's either, the, it's either they're actively searching out, but they're like on the weaker side or they're more powerful and don't bother you, with you as much. Right, so exactly. Yeah, I think yeah. if it was a weaker person, it wouldn't be something that you're fighting all the time. I think as a GM, you would just kind of like, throw in little complications for things um maybe between between adventures stuff like that i, I would think well and i think it, um, it again it depends on it feels like it depends a little bit on what you get from your advantage if you get one of those really hardcore advantages you you know you want to all these complications you want to balance that a little bit i think but again i haven't yeah, played it yeah, so i'll yeah. have to see how that you know works yeah. out so keep sure. it going so we got crumbling um which as the name sounds, it's all falling apart. It's all going to hell, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, something's crappy about it. Um, and this one, this one, the mechanical thing comes up later when we talk about the encounter rules. Um, so if you don't use in really encounters the same way, this might not be a good one to use. But basically, it, it just increases the range for the crumbling encounter to 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 to, to spire off. So that's basically yeah. what it is. Um, um, foreboding. Oh, right. Go ahead. Take her Number away. Three. Uh, something about it is just really. Uh, you know, uh, really imposing or it's scary or it's like, you know, an old government building from like a, a fascist or like, you know, a, a totalitarian authoritative government before. Something that's like, what, everything about this building gives people the creeps. Um, and basically it makes it really hard, just more thematically, it makes people not want to go there. It's probably hard to find support staff because nobody wants to be there. And then mechanically, everybody has the bad luck hindrance, which is a new hindrance. Uh, which um, you have one less penny, right? Or no, bad luck is you give. You have you one less penny. You give look, a penny to look the that up. <laughs> yeah, I'll look it up. Okay. Uh, well, whatever. You have the bad luck hindrance. Um, okay. And interesting here that you have to re-roll if it's hollow because that obviously wouldn't make sense. So, 
Yeah, because uh, then it would just be cool. flat. Um, and yeah. then uh, fourth is very public. I mean, I, I, easy to find. It's right out there. Everyone can see it. Um, if bad things happen, it can take out a bunch of, you know, like Hall of Justice in the middle of the city and it could take out city blocks if <clears throat> big battle happens or something like that. Yeah. Um, which is funny then, because then they say if the location is difficult to reach, take the remote result instead. So depending how you theme it, you would take the remote one as number six down here. Yeah. Now, what's interesting to me, Carl, is that like the remote one is. Well, I guess we'll talk about it when we get to the remote. <laughs> but even yeah, we'll talk about that when we get to the remote. So let's move on. Um, number five, intruders. Intruders. Uh, it's frequently invaded by. Stuff. Creatures from other dimensions, other superheroes. Yeah, it's something. It's something. Ghosts, whatever it is. Um, again, there's not really a mechanical to this. It's more for the GM to. It's kind of like gremlins. It, it adds a gremlin ish kind of thing to where they're stealing. Things might disappear. It causes yeah. some trouble. Like it's kind of, I guess, minorly inconveniences you in some shape or form. It doesn't seem that. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends if the game master really wants to make it hardcore and have something steal the most important piece of equipment you have. I guess you could do that, but um, it doesn't seem that harsh, but that's just from... It says they can attack, but yeah, there's no mechanical thing here, so it's completely up to the GM. Um, so, yeah. And then uh, finally, remote. Cool. Number six. Remote. It's in a remote location, <laughs> and it takes special time and equipment to get there, like... Um, a teleporter to get to a, you know, whatever, or you have to have a special boat or an aircraft. Um, and this one to me, like, it's funny because this almost seems like exotic location. Yeah. And, you, <laughs> and you know, and, and basically it's like, what if you got both of them? So it's both harder. For, like, the remote thing seems like it's also the benefit of having villains not be able to find you. But then if you took remote as a advantage, then you would think it also makes it hard for people to get there, which is kind of the same thing. So that one's a, that one's the kind of the weirdest to me that these are both pretty much identical in my mind. Um, yeah, I mean, if you can take the ferry to get there, they can take the ferry to get there, right? <laughs> yeah, because because if the advantage is that villains are hard to reach you, I mean, I guess you could just say that like, oh, all the like government agencies just have the teleporter, so it's not a big deal if that was the advantage. Like, I guess you could kind of work it out that way, right? Well, and it says, the, it says to work out, a lot of this is, you know, work with the GM to figure this yeah. all out. I think part of building this base is there's a lot of narrative stuff going on because you got For six, sure. you have these six kind of macro things that you really have to dig into the details, obviously, right? Um, yeah. So that was step two. That's the complications. Um, then comes step well, three. Let's talk, now oh, let's actually ahead. talk about it a little bit. I mean, we, I, I think this is a good part to like pause and talk about it. Um, well, first of all, I find this interesting because I think this is mainly built to have a base um, when you're starting the game. Absolutely. That's what how I read it. Yep. But like a lot of games are, I mean, at least my personal experience and how I generally like to play is that, you know, I don't like to start everybody just knowing each other. Uh, you know, it, that's just personally how I don't like it. And most games that I'm in don't start that way. Right. Like well, meeting in the tavern. Kind right. And, and I mean, the let's talk about the games that of mine you played in. Every one of those, yeah. you guys have built a base, but it yeah. didn't, but you didn't met. have it to start with. Um, no. Sometimes you tried to say, well, we really should have one, but you didn't. You found it, you built it up, and it's all been through yeah. role playing and adventures and all sorts of stuff like that. So that's really, you know, once it starts, you're just not going to fall into this. But I think this is really geared towards where the headquarters is the backdrop of the campaign to start with. Right. And so you, yes. you want to define this up front and work with the players to understand it uh, or I, but, figure but it like, out. Well, so. it's, can you do this in the middle of the game? I think it's definitely possible. I think it's almost better that you don't roll on it in, the, in that case or, well, I mean, if I was know, the game, re-roll if, I, if you need to, because it might not fit the game that it's like a remote location. Well, I think if the campaign's already started, now yeah. it suddenly becomes more, my personal opinion, becomes more on the GM's shoulders anyway. He's going to be picking out, yeah. it's, this is going to be a remote location. It's got this kind of interesting thing about it because the players are going to come into that as opposed to, yeah. hey, you know what? I want to build a base. 
you know, so let me get the shovel out and I'm going to build it in a remote location. It, it's more, I think, it, it, the game master then can use this as a tool to yeah. get something ready for, for players to discover or whatever. Ahead of time, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I think, I think it's possible either the GM on its own already has the, uh, rolled it. I do think it's fun, though, for the players to roll this. So I, I, mean, I think you could work it in. And that, and that goes into our next step anyways. So I guess we should just... Uh, like oh, and form. I, I guess uh, the one thing I want to talk about is like, like I said, a lot of these have uh, a lot of the, especially the advantages. I would say, um, a lot of them are so similar, like we were talking about. Like there is yep. a lot of coverage and, and, and the complications, and some between the advantages and the disadvantages. Um, I think the main thing here is to look at is that like, there at least for the advantages, there's there's very strict mechanical differences, and while like the hollowed and the inspiring and the renowned can all have overlap. They obviously have mechanical differences. And it's kind of more like you could still do the renowned and, you know, thematically have it more like the hollowed. And that's fine. I mean, they're, they're more just to give you ideas than anything, right? So... Yeah, um, for sure, for sure. And that goes into our next step. So anyway, so um, yeah, what's the next step? Number step three is form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so So... Now, now you know a little bit about it. You start kind of, I guess, fleshing out the details in a sense. Um, yeah, and that, and this is a very narrative. Um, yeah, this is you know, purely so. narrative. Purely yep. narrative. There's nothing here about rolling. Um, and this is truly the time where you really decide. I think one thing to, as a tip, is that like roll advantage and disadvantage. Don't even talk yet. You know, until you're finished rolling, don't even think about you know what the base is going to be like. So, like, roll them first, roll the disadvantage, and then be like, okay, where are we at? Um, uh, basically, the base on its own just has enough that it fits all the team and probably support staff. Uh, the first thing they talk about is, yeah, it's just the basic form. What does it kind of look like? Where is it? And then you could talk about the acquisition, right? That's what we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. um, so, as a GM, like you were talking about rolling beforehand, you would know that it's there. So, that it's not that they have to build it. It's more like they are presented with the opportunity to get the space. Um, so it just, it just gives some examples on like how they would possibly acquire it either by taking over another team space or, you know, the, 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 the government agency or whatever agency it is gifts it to them or they find it. So I think this could be a cool side quest, right? Yeah. Don't you think? You're thinking about what you're going to do when a big floating flying aircraft carrier shows up and I say, Hey, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. uh, and then it's cool. Then the next thing they talk about is maintenance. Um, right, and this they basically hand wave. They say, yeah. "Don't worry about, them. don't nickel and dime it," but it's, but it still should be something that is considered, and like you know, it's it's most it's they really want you to be more thematic. Um, so while like it might be a problem, like just I think you've done this too, Carl, right? In games where it's not like we have necessarily have to have all the money specifically to buy, and you're doing a chart. It's like we have to go do like a quest right, or an yeah. adventure to get some like, you know, crazy amount of funds that directly goes into, okay, this is maintaining the base or like stock. So again, turn the acquisition, uh, part of the acquisition quest could be the maintenance quest or have two kind of little ones to do this. Right. And, and, um, they, and they put some examples yeah. in which I, I, I thought was pretty cool. Well, I, I'm not examples, but they say, Hey, this could even drive a story around. You need to do something kind of distasteful. You know, you're, you're yeah. superheroes, but you're kind of out of cash, so you, you know, take that job. Yeah, yeah you take, <laughs> take that job. Where you know, could even I could even picture you know you're you're at the opening of the local Cineplex cutting a cutting a ribbon for a couple bucks, and then something happens, you know, <laughs> and then yeah, yeah hilarity yeah, yeah, ensues. Yeah, doing, so. <laughs> doing some, some yeah, and, and then the last thing about Minis, they actually talk about having support staff, and then um, to roll on yep. the ally personalities table. Um, so this is kind of where you think, okay. What kind of staff would they have at this place? And then, you know, for the for the GM, make sure you just pick out, you know, don't, you don't, you know how it is. Maybe an NPC that you don't think of is like becomes the favorite of the party, but um, have some of those kind of fleshed out for the, the players to bounce off of. Yep. Um, cool. Then we move on to the most mechanical part of the game is the upgrade section. Now, I did talk about this in the last video, and upgrades here is every time the, um, Every time the party gains an advance, they can choose to take an upgrade. And when they take an upgrade, they have to roll on the counter table. Um, so yeah, I think I, I had mentioned that 
what I mainly my criticism was is that I felt the encounters the encounters were a lot of them were not game breaking, but like you know, it's like the deck of many things. Like, oh, you're all of a sudden this crazy thing happens. Now the GM has to do that, and that if this is something that is happening every advance, which could be every two sessions, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, the GM always has the power to stop it, but how rules as written, that's how yeah. it's written, right? It, it, feel, it feels What's, pretty, yeah. it feels pretty uh, generous, I guess would be the term Very I'm generous. And, every, and, every and the encounters I are very negative. Pick something. Yeah. And then the, the, you can be honest. Let's talk about the, the upgrades. Yeah. Well, just, and, and just the finish, because you talked about the encounters. Yeah. Be honest, you know, I really don't like the idea of rolling on a table and that forces me to. Yeah, do something in a certain way that may not fit the narrative or and not my narrative, but what the players have moved towards. And, you know, we're yeah. building the story and now suddenly, oh, they rolled catastrophe. And we'll talk more about that. We'll and, talk about that. Yeah. Wasn't planning on it. So, OK, jump into. <laughs> and, and the one thing about the upgrades is before I didn't read through them closely. And now that we've read through them, I'm like, holy crap, this is intense. So, yeah, these are much more powerful than I thought they'd be. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about it. Um, start us off, Carl. Um, I haven't read them in as, as in detail as you probably because I was skimming through them. But you got things Let's like just advanced, read them now and react. <laughs> advanced firewall. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap! No. Um, advanced <laughs> firewall. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so this is um, so this is anybody's trying to hack into your system gets a uh, penalty minus eight. Um, minus eight to hacking rules. Right, but let's <laughs> let's be honest. If you got superheroes going against you, they probably got a bunch of pluses too, and it's probably yeah. not nearly yeah. as bad for, you know, a super against a super because, you know, we just got done playing kind of a supers game and it was, it, you know, it was not purely, but by the time he was done, he had so many bonuses. It had to be pretty, had to be still pretty minus eight is, no, is I'm not big. saying it's I mean, Trump if, change. No, <laughs> if I remember the last one, there might have been either I'm thinking of the science fiction one or the or SPC two. There was like a, a, a firewall one. And it was like minus two or minus four or something. So. Minus eight and failure failure automatically uh, signals everybody. It's still like, you know, and this is this is the low ball out of all of them. Like we're starting off here and this is the lower powered one. So you can yeah. see where this is going. Um, um, and the next one is base defense. Um, uh, well, I mean, it, it's kind of automatic equipment, you know, things that protect the base. The entrances. Yeah, entrances, the entrances you know, yeah. uh, and, and. It's probably well, they call it. They either get stun guns or pulse Gatling lasers, like lasers, like specific things in this book. Uh, you have those specific guns. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, keep going. Uh, and you can take it twice. Sorry, sorry. Oh, can to, you take it twice? You can take it twice to get like so. First, it covers the entrances, and then you take it twice to cover another room. It says. Oh, okay. Um, so if you have a so, specific yeah. room that you needed to cover, you can keep taking yeah. this. And pulse Gatling lasers are nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> they're they're pretty powerful so uh okay okay move on no that's fine that's fine um then we got break much to talk about there uh, okay it's thematic yeah it's just yeah. that you can keep i think that it's the, it, there's not mechanical things there but basically they're saying you can keep any super in there uh th there's something to counteract their powers in whatever you know flavor uh theme trapping that they have yep. The, pla the so, plastic room over the middle of the pit. Yeah. Okay. For uh, yeah. <laughs> um, then we got a command center, which, you know, it's kind of thematic. It's got a lot of stuff there, but yeah. it, it adds uh, kind of a plus two to research roles. So it gives you something. Um, but I think it's much cooler that, you know, that you guys now have something, you know, crazy big with, you know, big monitors, whatever, you know, back computer, whatever it is. So, um, yeah. And they give examples, gives examples for like pulp or like, you know, if it was like a noir 40s one, like you have like uh, pneumatic tubes, you know, those kind of things right, and right. stuff like that. So, <laughs> yeah, mechanically, probably not the strongest, but there's a lot of there uh, that you just have access to. Like if you just say, we have the command center, so we have a computer, we have phones, we have all this, blah, blah, blah. Yep, yep. Now, um, here's another, okay. This one, I don't, another get. one. Uh, this one I don't Carl, get. This I don't get it either because we just we have like an advantage of this. We have a disadvantage, and now we have the exotic location upgrade. That's an upgrade. So can... the base is in an unusual location, such as a space station, flying aircraft carrier, but exactly the same as those advantages and disadvantages. And... Uh, they can decide if it's hidden or not. <laughs> and, and the and... interesting thing is, says if you take it, yeah, um, you got to relocate. 
So if you take it not at the beginning, not yeah. at the beginning, you got to relocate. So it's kind of it's like you check Zillow. Didn't really like the no. overwater base, hard to get to with the ferry. You know what? We really want to have a jungle one. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, we want to go one. into the volcano. It's much more <laughs> open concept. Uh, but again, it, it just it just kind of it's. I mean, it's fine. It's just a weird upgrade to have when you have the advantage and the disadvantage, and then it can be hit or not. It's a lot of overlap there, but you know, yep. whatever. It's fine. Uh, sure. um, um, the next one is cool, <laughs> but powerful. But I like the theme of it. Monument. Well, well, monument. That's. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the um, the the advantage that you get. It has that same mechanical effect, right? Um, yes, it has you increased, it, it, the, it, increased the spirit die. So increase the spirit die, and yeah, another time you can increase the spirit die. The interesting thing about it, though, is it can only be taken after a team member, after another player character uh, has died. Um. So yeah, very similar to the um, uh, mentor. So, oh, no, so, sorry, the inspiring, the inspiring. So don't take Heroes Never Die setting rule if you really want to take this one. Or well, somebody you can or still somebody, die. You can still die in that. So. Yeah. But <laughs> so so or you know, somebody can take, you know, go out in a blaze of glory to save yeah. everybody and so they're remembered, right? Um then there's a hidden entrance. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's it. You know, the holographic wall. Again, this one's a little bit more thematic. Yep, yep. Uh medical um, center. Uh, plus two on healing rolls, pretty straightforward. Uh, decked yeah. out hospital, uh, yep. science lab, decked out science lab, plus two to science, so science or relevant research, research role. Yeah. Um, occult library, plus two to occult rolls. Again, some of these might not be appropriate for, but yeah, you can pick these, but yeah. Yeah, well, um, obviously the game masters may not allow all of them if they don't make sense, yeah. right? Um, then you've got a security team, um, which has five security agents five, five. yeah <laughs> exactly five protecting the base <laughs> only five oh, <laughs> six five would be guys. too much four would be just be ridiculous uh six is you know you can't afford that so you got to stick with five cost too much yeah. so the upkeep but you can take it six. again for another five sure. yeah. <laughs> or you can give them all in advance so there's some flexibility there you know you, they says you can take them on teams but generally that's not recommended because they're not supers and they'll die so um, leave them at, leave them back at the base to defend. Well, there are security agents at the base. Stay there. Do yeah. your job. <laughs> Do your job. <laughs> we need red shirts, okay? Uh, next, we have self-sufficient. It has its own everything. And basically, mechanically, you have 90 days that you can go without, you know, if you're, if you're, um, people are at your door, your walls, basically, yeah. uh, under siege. Live off or the grid. Whatever. If there's a global catastrophe that happens, you have 90 days that you can be fine. Um... Then there's teleporter, yep. which is an interesting one. Yes. Uh, GM's approval. But you think all of these are with the GM approval, but okay. Either high tech or magical, it allows you to send 10 people anywhere on the uh, planet as you want. Take it a second time, you can do it anywhere in the universe. Taking third time, it can go anywhere in the multiverse. Sure. Uh, a minute to recharge, an electronics roll, um, or it's an automated system that has its own. And then a failure on that role would make, a, you know, you, you just are off course of it. So obviously this is like extremely GM dependent, whether they want to give this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but what if you can you get a teleporter to go to the metaverse? Um, so you think you're somewhere, but you're really in virtual reality. Could do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, like, uh, yeah right. Uh, and then one, training of your, room. then one of your favorites, training rooms. <laughs> Every base you've ever done, you've spent a lot of time worrying Am about I? the training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the training room. Yep. And okay. Chicago Plex training room. And I did. Oh, yeah, I guess I did. Yeah, right, you were yeah. excited about the training room. Um, My last character was like the battle commander. So that was like absolutely important for him. But yep. yeah, uh, it gives you plus one toughness to everybody. So. Okay. Um, you know, that's, yeah, not good. Uh, what's next, Carl? Trophy room? Yep. Uh, what does it do? You, oh, three times you can take it. And, oh, you get like a pool of bennies for the whole team. Yeah. Um, so every time they take it, uh, getting these trophies, you add a benny to kind yeah. of a team pool. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like adding a new mechanic out there. I, um, I like this one, though, because I think it's cool because it's something, again, it's kind of like the... Um, the uh what's it called the uh monument one where you would take this after you did something really cool and then that trophy would be representative of that right 
So I like that part of it, but I get what you're saying. It's like an extra pool of bennies that it, whoever's, it basically rotates every session to who's kind of in control of that. And then it acts as that edge that allows you to hand out bennies to anybody. Right, right. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's interesting for sure. For sure. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And then uh, vehicles, um, super vehicle, flying jet, they, whatever. Right. Yeah, great. Uh, it says, it's funny, when they first take it, it gets them specifically the Chieftain bikes. <laughs> Uh, it, oh, it's a, or, or a juggernaut APC or a jump jet or a custom super vehicle so you can even make your own using the vehicle power well and, you know I, I guess it, it, again it goes back to the superpowers companion it helps you make superpower games Yeah, I, I hate when they get too bogged down in well here's a thing that happens to be specifically in the book because yeah. your world or your concept may not have a chieftain bike um, yeah, but you, you can't make a custom one with the vehicle yeah. power, I guess. Um, yep. But in this case, I would only, you know, it has to be like a group vehicle, but still pretty powerful because that's that's basically right. superpower. That you yeah, so and if up. you're picking your vehicle, make sure yeah. that you think about the next one. The next upgrade is a vehicle <laughs> bay because you don't want to have yes. to park it on a street because if you're that's in a true. bad part of town, just, you know, you're going to go out it's, to it's your gonna super bike. <laughs> it's going to be gone. Yeah. <laughs> and the so, vehicle bay just gives you plus two to repair rules on it. Yep, yep. Sorry. Trying to be funny, failing miserably. Anyway, no, uh, no, no, it was funny. No, I, I liked it. Yeah, I just. Uh, um. So and, yeah. and so we mentioned every time you take one of these upgrades, there's an encounter that comes along with it. Um, yes. And you roll on the encounters table. Um, it goes up to twenty. Um, and this is where, for me, like you know, the advantages. I mean, the 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 upgrades. Some of them are much stronger. Some of them are interesting. Uh, but again, encounters like we talked about this many times now. Is, this is where it kind of makes me want to like change this a bit. I don't. This wouldn't work for me. I don't think this would work for you, right? So, well, I'm not a big um, fan of random encounter tables. You know, like, yes. You know, random wandering not monsters. Either. Not a fan of them. There's got to be a purpose for something Thanks. to happen. There's a reason it happens. Yeah. Whether the players caused it, whether it's from players' actions, so it doesn't have to be a railroad. But yeah. there's a reason something happens not just kind of randomly and, picking you know and the wandering monster at the very least that kind of thing it's like oh it's just supposed to you know be an impetus in your travel but it's not thematically altering the story these right. are yeah. can often be thematically altered the story so let's, let's run through them all right uh, so go so okay. well one through one number one if you get a one you know critical fail so mm -hmm. to speak uh, it's rolled twice both the you know both results apply two to uh -huh. eight is just nothing happens so, yeah. um, so until you get to nine, um, that's where we have mysterious portal, portal, mysterious portal, um, that leads to another dimension. Um, something comes in, something visiting, maybe you, you go somewhere else, possibly. It right? says even another savage world, another setting, <laughs> yep, <laughs> which would yep. be okay. Available, uh, available at peginc.com. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's the next one. This gets... Here's where it gets really. I mean, that one's pretty bad, right? It's a portal. I mean, oh, as a GM, be. you could at least yeah, yeah. you could at least kind of shape that. It's like it's not like you know a Cthulhu's coming through. Uh, but the next one is specifically the Cthulhu's Rampage. coming through. No, <laughs> <laughs> giant monster terrorize the city. Um, yeah. Save Puff the Marshmallow base. Man's on the way. What are you gonna do? So yeah, terrorize the city and the team's base is directly in its path. So this is one where. Um, you know, this is this is a city destroying thing. This one's directly attacking your base. This is a big thing, right? So yeah. big deal. Um, again, something maybe that's not what's going in. What should be there, but anyway, um, beat that to death. Uh, then there's attack where the super villains attack the base. Um, you know, it says here could be any way, right? It doesn't have to be a frontal assault. It could be sneaking in. Could be a Trojan horse. You know, that sort yeah. of thing. So yep. Um, At least this one compared to the last one, it would just be like a probably a combat encounter, right? It's not going to change the story as much as a city, a, a, a monster destroying the city or whatever. Right, um, right. And if you do yeah. have, and if you do have super villains, it makes sense at some point there's going to be a clash, right? Yeah. Uh, and so if it's if it's through this particular encounter, great, it'll work out fine. So, um, and then uh, next one, which is we're up to twelve now, so we went nine, ten, eleven, twelve, is collapse, um, mm -hmm. which is part of the base collapses. Um, well, you lose an upgrade, um, and then it says or or target of supervillain attack. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> did I, oh, yeah, did like I basically, something? like I think they mean like either an accident happened that caused the base to collapse, or um, you know, the villains attack like th- a missile and like that, you know, the wall that was about to co- the, the, the load bearing wall finally gave way. So it's kind of more of an off. I'll, I'll use the term off screen. It's not. It it happened. It and happens now. There's but the, the mechanically now you yeah, got to deal with the ramifications of it. You lose so. an upgrade. That's the mechanical part. You lose right. an upgrade, and they say that the next time you get a um, upgrade, then that one's the, the upgrade that was destroyed is repaired automatically. Okay. So it's only a temporary loss of that upgrade, which I think it's interesting. You could basically take an upgrade, and then instantly have it destroyed. <laughs> so that's an well, there. You go. Sure. There. Yeah. Um, and then we have shortfall. This is where mm-hmm. teams finances that support you know, mechanism, <clears throat> they run short, um, yeah. and they got to do something to, you know, make it back up. Um, so, all right. Uh, then secret identity, which is 14, um, secret identity of a team member is threatened, obviously assuming that there are secret identities. Um, yeah. and it could, it could be a very ver- variety of way. And when that happens, then someone else can do something with that information, which then the uh, game master could use for future adventures, right? Yeah, it, it's a whole adventure there. Usually, it, it's 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 not that it's been the the secret identity has been uh, uh, revealed to the public. It's that this is about to happen, so you got to go deal with this. So this is a quest in some way or an adventure in some way. Okay, and then uh, hostile government. Mm-hmm. Go, take that one. My throat's <laughs> getting to me. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, somebody in the government is had enough with the heroes, and they try to make it difficult, um, either by it says slowing construction upgrades, so making upgrades harder to get, I guess, uh, whatever, just something to do that affects them, and it could even lead to a social conflict in court. They they point out. Yeah. So don't um, so don't uh, so don't piss off the unions. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, then you got a catastrophe. Have 16? Yeah. Yep, we're at 16. Catastrophe. Um, natural or man-made, disaster, threatens the base, yeah. or the area around it. You'll notice that almost all of these encounters has to do with the base, right? So that's that's the point, right? Yeah. You upgrade it, and now there's something happening to the base, or potentially happening to the base. Um, so they talk about normal stuff. You know, it could be weather, it could be a battle, you know, it could be something else that's going on, right? So, yeah. Okay. Uh, local trouble is 17. Um, I, I, I mean, a lot of these are similar. I think this one's supposed to be, instead of the government specifically having it out, the like local community has an issue and they bring it to the authorities or they file a lawsuit or, you know, it's, it's a like public witch hunt type of thing. Um, so even if, even if the authorities are friendly, they have to obviously deal with them. Um, so, so don't whatever. piss it's off the, the public. So yeah. Somebody in the public is 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 has had a problem with you. So don't piss uh, off your homeowners association or your unions or there's a lot of you <laughs> know just just be careful what you're doing when you're upgrading your your yeah. property. Make sure the easements are right and uh, for sure you talk to all your and, neighbors. And the ultimate, I guess <laughs> the ultimate supervillain teams, the HOA. HOA. Uh, <laughs> they, they should just be villains in every single. Thing. Just um, uh, and then uh, eighteen is trophy trouble. Um, that's funny. <laughs> so you took trophies. I actually like this one a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, why do you like it so much? It's kind of interesting. Because it's yeah. funny. Trophy trouble is funny. I uh, like an iteration, and then you know, it's just the T Rex statue comes to life. Uh, one of the things that you brought in is curse. Like I, I think this one's like cool, but it's still you know, it's still a big thing. It, it's an encounter happens. Um, so whatever happens, that you have to deal with this and discover that it's a trophy or whatever. Yeah. Know. So you create a trophy room at some point. You got a trophy and. Now, and it could be somebody that just had it in their bedroom. It doesn't have to be. Oh, yeah. This, sure, sure. You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, cool. And then interview is 19. Yeah. Um, well, it says a local reporter visits the base to interview one or more of the team. If it happens again, national reporter wants a scoop. Um, uh, good social interaction opportunity. Yeah. You know, this one's not questions. bad because yeah. at least it's, at least it's, it's more like an interlude and they say it could either be, if they're friendly with the interviewer, it could be nice. If it's, you know, if they're not in good standing, it'd be kind of a gotcha. Um, it really makes me feel like I, if mass effect games, there was a reporter that's nefarious for like 
giving you a hard time. And <laughs> uh, it sort of kind of reminds me of it. You can either like piss her off or not. And it changes. Um, yeah. Bring me a photo of Spider-Man. Anyway. <laughs> uh, and then the last one, number 20 is uh, celebration. Um, it's a good one. Yeah. I, parade I guess. for the heroes. Yeah. <laughs> you have a parade. So, you, so it's, it's, I don't know. It's from an encounter standpoint, it, I think of them as being kind of a yin and yang. You got an upgrade and then something. Well, this one, everybody's happy. So City it's a Strong. 20. It's a 20, right? Yeah, so yeah. It's, a, it's a natural win. So that's it's cool. an inter- it makes you do an interlude. And it's like basically saying do an interlude in it and then you get conviction or whatever for it. Um, so th- that's that's the whole kit and caboodle. Um, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about upgrades and everything. Um, so like I said, I've said before, I think in this video, the last video is that, you know, this is supposed to be every advance and they're just too strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the encounter table, you know, it's not that bad. I mean, some of them are, like we said, it's kind of forcing the GM to do something, but it's bad when you think about this could be happening every advance. Like that's, yeah. something, that's not something that anybody wants to do, right? I mean. Well, and because, so the issue, the issue I have is I think it's, you know, way too permissive every advance. But, yeah. Um, we're talking every advance is one or two sessions, right? Or at the at the two max, three. three sessions, yeah. right? You're doing... Yeah. So some of these encounters... So you picked an upgrade on your advance. Some of these yeah. encounters, like, hey, you your secret identity may all, almost be, you know, shown. So now you need to go do something. Okay, so that's kind of a session. <laughs> so, so you've yeah. got somewhat of an adventure, a line, but every couple of sessions you're going to get an advance. Do I just put advances on hold so we can finish this little mini thing? Uh, again, I haven't played it, so I'm not sure how this all worked out, but it seems like yeah, you could be spending I mean, all your time dealing with these encounters. For sure. You know, yeah, and, and they could be at weird times. I don't. Th- this is one of the things that you know. Generally, I think we try to be like, well, we haven't played it really, so we can't give a judgment. I think this one we could probably give a pretty good judgment just because you know, we know how game flow goes. I mean, and we know how this would interrupt it. So for me, I still like the upgrades. A lot of the themes. I still the encounters are still kind of cool. But like I said before in the last video, I would personally, you know, you still use them, but unhitch them from being connected to advances they're not connected to advances anymore and then give them as rewards the upgrades allow them to do it either if they go and specifically want to do like a little quest about it or just give them a reward as part of another thing they're already doing so it's something when they wouldn't get an advance because then you're giving then you're giving them you know i'm always for things happening when you're not getting like a level up or an advance because that makes it like the the players are getting reward more more often you know, so even from that standpoint, I think it's better to do it that way. Is that you're just kind of spreading out the the good times, well, and this I, way the GM has more control, and it's actually something that's like a reaction to something that the players did. Yeah, and what's nice about the the upgrades is they provide that list of mechanical um, yeah. interactions. And so one of the things when we were doing bases in the game, you guys were like, "Hey, I want to do this thing. I want to do that thing." Well, we have to kind of well, what that might be. Well, this this codifies it, and so if the players yeah. say. I want to have this and the game master says, well, you can get this if this happens and this is the way you can do it. There's an adventure there. There's a scenario. Great. Um, But now when they're all done and they now have a training room or they now have, you know, these trophies, there's a mechanical piece that you can just use. You don't have to kind of think, well, what happens when you get your library? Oh no, here's, you know, it it, does this. Yeah, it does this. And that's really nice, but I would not, just have it magically happen you know we no we got especially advance, not tied so, to advances no. <laughs> you know this thing happens yeah so and, and because there's a thematic like you could do it where in a you know adventure and encounter you have maybe like part of this thing oh there's a all these occult books you know in this base but then over here there's um you know uh um whatever uh, so yeah trophies so it could be like they decided to okay we want these occult books so we're going to bring them back to the base and now they have the occult library so you can use this as inspiration to kind of flavor your maps and encounters. Because um, I, I think I would still do it. Like, I think you're saying that too. You might still do it. It's just you wouldn't do it tied to advances, right? Oh, um, no. Oh, no. And then with the encounters, you know, I, I would look at this as more as almost rolling like a, um, not a not a plot point, but like a, like as a idea to make an adventure or idea for maybe this is how they get the, uh, uh, um, maybe this is how they get the upgrades. They have to like deal with this thing. 
and then you can decide when you do it. So you know, okay, I want to give them an advance. I want to give them a um, uh, upgrade that they can choose or from a different options. So I'll, I'll roll on the encounter table and kind of see what I get. Or you just look at one yeah. and you're like, oh, I like I, this I, one. I, I don't really, I, I don't think I would really see myself using the table all that much yeah. because it's very prescriptive, right? This is a thing yes. that happens and it's like, oh, you know, uh, especially if the players are using adventures to get their upgrades, they've already gotten their upgrade because they did a thing. We don't yeah. need to do another thing. So uh, like you said, maybe it gives you some ideas. That's great. But yeah. I don't really see myself using it, to be quite honest. So, um, all right. Well, that is headquarters. Headquarters, um, yeah. <laughs> I for, Forgive me for all the really bad jokes. Um, but good stuff. Uh, I think it's an interesting part of the game. De definitely a lot of peg, um, peg settings have a headquarters kind of thing. And so this, yeah. this very, very well matches the kinds of things you'd want to do in a, a supers game, as long as you tailor it uh, to the, to your campaign in a way you want to run it. So, okay, mm -hmm. great. Um, so once again, this is Tabletop Tango with Carl and Eric. And we appreciate you watching. Look at the bubbles, do the stuff. Uh, I didn't mention it up front, but any support we get. Thanks. Um, the bubbles are down here. Oh, they're here. Okay. <laughs> any support we get, we're going to plow right into Savage World's material that we can bring to the channel. You know, Kickstarters aren't cheap, right? And there's only so mm -hmm. much that my significant other will say, go ahead and spend money on it. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, so thank you again for watching, and we will catch you guys next time. It's the Savage World. Strangers a weird war. It's a savage world. Five to explore. It's a savage world.